There is such an important cultural legacy here, not just for Peruvians, but the legacy for the entire world. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 archaeological discoveries in the 20th century. So you think there's something beneath? Well, we may know by the end of today. For this list, we'll be looking at the most amazing and influential archaeological finds that were unearthed between 1900 and 2000. Have you seen any of these in person? What did you think? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. The World's Earliest Figurative Art This site is, was a really special site and it's, it was incredibly exciting because it, it, it just it's located in this hidden valley. Located in southwest Indonesia are the caves in the Moros Pangep Karst, which house the world's earliest pieces of figurative art. Figurative art is that which directly represents a place or object, as opposed to the more elusive abstract art. The caves were excavated in the early 70s and contained handprints and various drawings of animals. Kalau kita perhatikan di gambar uh, babinya itu dia seperti menggunakan uh, kuas yang kemudian dicelupkan ke pigmen dan dioleskan ke dinding gua. One painting of a celibus warty pig is at least 45,500 years old, and it's believed that the handprints are up to 40,000 years old. These are similar to the handprints found in Spain's cave of Maltra Vieso, which was discovered about 20 years before the caves in Moros Pangep Karst. Both are fascinating pieces of archaeology that provide a sense of humanity to our distant, distant ancestors. And then we're also interested in whether or not Neanderthals themselves uh, could be producing art, um, and the dating of this will tell us whether or not they are made by modern humans or made by Neanderthals. Number 9. The Serapium of Alexandria Over 2,000 years ago, this stark, sprawling ruin was probably the most important center for learning in the world. Here, men first figured out the size of the world and the number of stars in the sky. Unfortunately, the Library of Alexandria has been lost to time, as it was likely destroyed during the Palmyrene invasion of Egypt in 270. But we have since found the next best thing, its daughter library, the Serapium. This Greek temple was also located in Alexandria and stored various collections and documents belonging to the library. The Serapium closed in 325 and it was destroyed in 391. The only thing remaining was Pompey's Pillar, an 88-foot-tall column that is still standing today. It was at the base of this column that excavations began in 1944, revealing the old foundations of the temple. With it, archaeologists unearthed one of the major sites of knowledge in the ancient world. Number 8. Gobekli Tepe Archaeologists estimate that it would have taken a team of 50 men an entire week to move just one of the monolithic pillars from the limestone quarry to the top of the hill where they stand today. We know that Gobekli Tepe is a monumental archaeological discovery, proving one of humanity's oldest pieces of architecture. We just don't really know what it is. Gobekli Tepe is a massive site in southeast Turkey dating back to 9,500 BCE. The area was first discovered in 1963, but it wasn't excavated until the mid-1990s. These excavations were started by archaeologist Klaus Schmidt, who believed that Gobekli Tepe was a communal sanctuary used by nearby hunter-gatherers. However, this interpretation has been challenged in recent years. Huge importance has been placed on its age, as this was around the time that humanity transitioned from hunter-gatherers to more permanent agricultural societies. Did Gobekli Tepe play a role in that transition? Inevitably, in archaeology, if we don't know what something is for, we think of ritual. But really, it's pure speculation. Number seven, Sutton Who. The degree of detail in that face mask, the garnets that pick out the eyebrows, the little sort of toothbrush moustache over the mouth, I mean, all this stuff is quite extraordinary. Back in 1926, Colonel Frank Pretty purchased a large mansion on the eastern coast of England near the port town of Woodbridge. The surrounding land was dotted by many large mounds. When Pretty died in 1934, his widow Edith decided to have the mounds excavated. They revealed a highly important piece of Anglo-Saxon history. Brown has just shown me a Merovingian premises. That's Anglo-Saxon. Now called Sutton Who, the area consists of two early medieval cemeteries and an important ship burial. Found within was a wealth of rich and luxurious artifacts, including the Sutton Hoo helmet, 
It is believed that the recipient of the ship burial was King Raedwald, who ruled East Anglia from 599 to 624. To this day, Sutton Hoo is enormously important in studying Anglo-Saxon culture and the history of East Anglia. Charles Phillips, who was then at Cambridge University, heard about it and he came out to look and then was absolutely gobsmacked, to use a modern phrase, to see this huge excavation of this massive ship. Number six, Machu Picchu. There are no written clues in the city, no carvings to suggest a purpose. This Inca citadel looks like something from a fairy tale, situated on top of an almost 8,000 foot tall mountain. The area is populated by dry stone walls, small buildings, and temples. Found in southern Peru, Machu Picchu was occupied for about 100 years between the 15th and 16th centuries. Modern study indicates that the citadel was made for Pachacuti, the ninth monarch of the Inca Empire. Unfortunately, not much is known about the site itself, as the Inca did not have a written language and therefore did not leave behind any clues. Machu Picchu was abandoned owing to the Spanish conquest, and nature slowly reclaimed its spot. However, it was eventually rediscovered by explorer Hiram Bingham, who began excavations in 1912. Still, if this place played such a critical role in demonstrating the religious and military power of the Inca, why didn't the Spanish deface it? Number five, the Dead Sea Scrolls. These ancient texts are so fragile that only four highly trained researchers from the Israel Antiquities Authority are allowed actually to handle them. It's amazing to think about what's hidden away in random caves. If it's not the oldest art in human history, it's old bits of parchment that completely redefine a religion. Back in the mid-1940s, three local men were walking through a cave near the Dead Sea when they came across some scrolls housed in old jars. These, among other future finds, are now known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. Dated from the 3rd century BCE to the 1st century CE, the scrolls contain important pieces of religious scripture and are largely written in Hebrew. Included are ancient manuscripts of the Hebrew Bible and various religious books that were never canonized, including the apocalyptic Book of Enoch. This is the only copy that contains all of the Ten Commandments. Oh my goodness, so this is, so, the, is this the oldest record of the Ten Commandments? This is the though? oldest record of the Ten Commandments. Number four, Mohenjo-Daro. Archaeologists believe that over 35,000 people once occupied the city. This name is Sindhi for Mound of Dead Men, which sounds a lot scarier than it actually is. Found in Pakistan, Mohenjo-Daro was an ancient city belonging to the Indus Valley Civilization, which was the most widespread of the early Near East societies. It was erected sometime around 2500 BCE and was home to approximately 40,000 people. The city prospered for a number of centuries, but was eventually abandoned somewhere between 1900 and 1700 BCE. The city remained lost to time until 1919, when it was rediscovered by archaeologist R. D. Benerjee. An ancient city lost in the desert of Pakistan sounds like something out of Indiana Jones, and it is undeniably one of the 20th century's greatest archaeological discoveries. Number 3. King Tut's Tomb It takes eight men to lift its lid, to reveal the most incredible sight of all. Every archaeologist dreams of making the next great discovery. British man Howard Carter made that discovery in November of 1922. After years of failure and dejection, Carter discovered the tomb after his water boy quite literally tripped over the stairs. Tutankhamun ruled during the 18th dynasty of ancient Egypt, his reign spanning from 1332 to 1323 BCE. While his tomb is both small and modest, it contained a wealth of amazing artifacts, and these finds made it a phenomenon. Included in the tomb were many elaborate and well-preserved burial goods, Tutankhamun's mummy, and his famous gold mask. The tomb of King Tut makes for one of the greatest archaeological finds of all time, let alone the 20th century. The discovery was used as a reassertion of the Egyptian identity and a proof of us being the descendants of the ancient Egyptians, which means that we're not supposed to be ruled by any foreigners. Number two, the Terracotta Army. Like the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Terracotta Army of China was discovered completely by accident by non-archaeologists. In 1974, a group of small farmers was digging wells in Xi'an, China, when they made the startling discovery. And what an amazing discovery it turned out to be. 
hundreds of terracotta soldiers, horses, and chariots stand still in time, forever protecting the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang. The army dates to approximately 210 BCE, which is when Qin Shi Huang died at the age of 49. The high level of detail, the work that was involved in making the clay army, the fact that it was so well preserved, it's all astounding to consider, and it is truly a sight to behold. Look at the scale of this place. Tells you a lot about the guy. You know, his ego. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number 1. Lucy Foot bones, hand bones, we've got two complete skulls, we've got lots of limb bones, we've got vertebra, ribs, uh, just about representing just about every bone in the body. The 20th century was an enormously important time for paleoanthropology. It saw the discovery of Olduvai Gorge, an area in Tanzania that has provided great insight into human evolution through its many ancient finds. And in 1974, Lucy was discovered in Ethiopia. Named after the Beatles' Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, Lucy is a collection of bones that are over 3 million years old. These bones comprise nearly half of a female Australopith, which was an early relative of humans. She's a different species, she's not us but to provide an emotional connection with her in her death, so that in her death, that death brought her to life. Lucy has been invaluable in the study of this species and human evolution in general. For example, Lucy shows us that we walked on two feet before our brains grew larger. Finds don't get much more important than this. I think in many ways she looked like the ape that stood up. Yeah, amazing. You know, yeah. like the ape that stood up. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.